What is going on people? It's Matt from Liquid Loans. In this video, I thought I'd bring someone on because no pun intended, but I feel this guy has flown under the radar. If you like Moon Math, you are going to love this guy, his content. So before we get into it, health and safety first, have your moon boots firmly secured before watching this stream. So with no further ado, let me intro Mr. Top Gun Hexi Dian. What is going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And actually to, to settle this one, because I know it's funny. I mean, if if hexagons can pun on Mexican, hexadian on Canadian, that that's ah, that's the basis of that one. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Now I get it. So how, how do you say it again? Hexadian, like hexadian. Canadian. Just drop the can for hex, like you drop yeah. the M for hex for Actually, original yeah. i like it i like it man there's going to be more people now changing their uh <laughs> nationalities to some sort of hex you know hex uh, twist on it but listen man thanks for coming on i really enjoy your content you're putting out some great content on your channel it's grown i think we just talked about to 1300 uh, subscribers in the last you know couple of weeks which is amazing for all the people that don't know who you are maybe you could give us a quick bio or maybe even a long bio and background about yourself and how you got into crypto and all that good stuff well, thank you, Maddie. I just want to say it's awesome being on this channel. I've watched it for quite a while. Uh, started like I saw it when it was first coming out with its first episode. So I've uh, <laughs> uh, really, really kind of flattered to be on here. Did not ever expect this kind of uh, attention or engagement. Um, a little That's bit of good. background about myself, though. So uh, a lot of the community is like, who is this guy? Why? Why has he got these explanations? Like and I have kind of appeared out of nowhere with quite a big opinion. So to kind of uh, throw this way back, my bio is not exactly traditional to put it into simpler terms. Um, when I was two years old, I was programming uh, Betamax to record Star Trek, but I couldn't speak or what you or wasn't potty trained. So computers have always been my jam and so is mathematics. So, I mean, I was eight years old when somebody taught me bed mass on the back of a beer coaster in a bar and I started making my own homework at school. So that's where uh, I come from in this. Um, and then when it came to high school time, I got uh, I was late for class, forgot my calculator, came into class, I had a complete crank of a teacher. I thought she was just had it with me, finally dragging me off to detention for being late. I get tossed into a room full of a bunch of other kids with uh, calculators and pencils going, oh, great, what is this? University of Waterloo in Ontario, uh, they do a math competition every year. And uh, competition's pretty simple, multiple choice, high-end mathematical functions. One point for answering it correctly, zero points for not answering it, and negative two if you answer it wrong. Have at her. I uh, had to borrow a pencil and some paper, had no calculator, and I got first place in the school. Wow. Yeah. So mathematics savant, but then life goes sideways. So before I could take up the scholarship or uh, even finish high school, health problems got in the way. Um, and honestly, a little bit of depression and uh, life didn't start actually getting back on track until the middle of uh, the pandemic. Locked in all by myself for a long time. Had to start looking for a new way of life kind of re reinvent the way that I look at the world and uh, and try and find some actual meaning, something to grab onto. And I wish I could say I was one of those proud people at this point that uh, got into sci-fi or sci or whatever and had their life saved. But no. So, I mean, the, during this time, I got out of computers just as Bitcoin was coming out, thought it was a scam because I understood the programming. I understood the encryption, but uh mm -hmm. I didn't understand the liquidity pools. Where could I get the money from? So didn't want to touch it. Uh, of course, one of those stories could have gotten 100 coins for 50 bucks. So as I'm changing my life and working towards actually living by better spiritual principles and uh, trying to focus on living a better life. Funny, wouldn't it be that in this act, I'm meeting other people that are like minded and then I meet a hexagon. <laughs> so this is how I got turned on to Richard Hart and Richard Hart projects. So I... November 10th, just this past year, not even six months ago, I bought a little bit of Hex for FOMO. Honestly, just FOMO got me in. I watched the bump the next day and then the crash. And I had to know more. I, I was bitten. I had the bug. Mm -hmm. And the more I watched Richard Hart and saw the, the values that he brings to 
like it's so much different than just capitalism like he's actually trying to bring back principles and values just the fact that he won't spend a single dollar on advertising that it's attraction rather than promotion mm. um i mean that's amazing all on its own and the community gathers behind him and then they bought the brad's broadside of a nascar <laughs> so yeah. i mean this was this caught me so then i started diving into the mathematics and now i'm starting to look at the programming a little bit more and i'm using a lot of old skills from the 90s borland c plus plus and html and cisco certification learning tcp ip protocols that's the traditional stuff and i got into that because you know a movie called hackers back in the 90s made it all look cool and i was like well i'm good with computers anyway get into it find out just how tedious and boring it is so i wouldn't have ever considered myself an actual programmer because usually to me a programmer can sit down and write all the code all the functions and plan it all out i'm more of a script kitty i can show up see a code possibly do improvements on it but i'm just as likely to create an exploit <laughs> I'm uh, trying to improve it. So yeah, uh, diving back into this, I am full of self-taught, full of um, full of myself, full of opinion. <laughs> um, I, I, I generally have a, a, a lot of interest in anything that I find exciting for growth of technology. So hmm. when I got into this, the idea that uh, technology back in the 90s, web uh 2.0 the whole dot-com boom it wasn't for me i kind of saw it and saw it how fake and empty nothing was getting produced and didn't interest me but web 3.0 this really does this community interests me so it's easy to have passion because i'm engaged intellectually and i'm engaged spiritually by this community i mean that's really interesting that obviously you're, everyone's got their own story but you've from from a bad place i guess like you said the pandemic from being you know a lot of people were going through hard times obviously people were off work and what's not but then they use that time you use that time to create an upward spiral and that's when you started finding out about crypto in general so you hadn't bought anything up until this year is that right well uh, like i said november 10th 2021 i uh i still didn't actually even know there was a difference between bitcoin and ethereum at that point wow. <laughs> <laughs> and now you've, you're deep down the rabbit hole your videos on price and you know your moon math uh is really intriguing obviously you're not pulling it out of thin air you're doing you know you're doing the arithmetic behind it what do you think what do you think pulse could do in the short term and long term so pulse is amazing for a lot of reasons that are hard to put into any mathematical terms for me um so, I mean, people want to hear the moon math. So I'll start there with a couple of things. And then I'm probably going to go to an economic kind of thesis as to the value I see. Um, but from a moon math perspective, um, I've been toying around a little bit with Metcalf's law. So simple principle that the value of a network is equal to the square of the users. And closer, it should be half the square of the users. Um, so that value is traditionally for a telecommunications network so a certain style and class of network but the idea of the growth of the formula is like a fibonacci sequence uh, the idea that the parts of the whole will make it greater and make it grow larger in its next next springs at least along this s curve uh, model so the value inherently in the number of users is greater than the number of users so this has been true in telecommunications i've been toying with it a little bit in the terms of uh in the terms of pulse and crypto so i've seen some formulas somebody came up with something trying to directly relink the price to metcalf's law in bitcoin but I've looked at it in a little bit of a different angle where I started examining the size of the liquidity pools in relation to the number of users. So this is where I found occasionally a small weird correlation with Metcalf's law that if you scale it further and divide it by 10 for the value. So I, in some assets, I have to do a lot more math because I work a day, do day job doing construction. I don't have the time for all this, but where I've kind of pegged it for a few assets, it looks like 10 cents to the dollar is almost a rough uh, dollar peg to the value point on that cost loss. So instead of dividing by two, divide by 20, and it kind of scales it for the crypto hmm. on just the assets I've been looking at. So what this means is I find it very interesting that roughly for a price point of one hundredth of a cent, the sacrifice value, 
mm. that Pulse X at 140,000 users was able to produce almost one billion user or one billion dollars worth on uh, Ethereum, about uh, 980 million or 975 million. Mm. So then, when I did this scaling uh, and took and look at 140 users and do the math, square it, and cut it back, the value works out to yeah, at the 10 cents to the dollar to exactly what was sacrificed and raised for the Paul Sachs. So as I see the network in the layer one, if this were to hold true, how long do you think we would take us to get to 1.4 million users? 140,000 were worth that. 1.4 million users could t potentially generate by that math model just shy of $100 billion of liquidity for the asset. Hmm which liquidity pools are not constant, like the K value holds some constant in mathematics, but people can provide liquidity or remove liquidity in that sense without buying and trading against it. But still, this is more like looking at a 200 point moving average. I'm trying to find just a base trend that can be either just above or below, something that seems to lock in. Hmm. This would suggest by also the same calculations that I look, if there's roughly 1.4 million, um, yeah, roughly 1.4 million Ethereum locked indexes, then that means that the Ethereum network indexes locked value right now, it's what, uh, 3,500 or something? What is the price for Ethereum? Uh, 3,000. All right, if that's the case, then the value should be roughly 4.3 billion. Yeah, roughly 4.3 billion. Um, what did I due to the tab there we go so um again along with the same logic and thinking that uh 100 billion or just shy of 100 billion 970 billion is roughly a little more than 20 times larger than that well that would mean that the price would 20 times larger 20 times smaller 20 squared 400 that'd be a 400x theoretically from the sacrifice value of 100 hundredth of a cent so four cents potentially could be the price if we could get up past 1.4 million users in this kind of thinking with my cast law so there's some moon math for oh. you guys wow four cents a lot of people so that's for pulse right? that's for pulse that's just for the layer one for pulse mm. uh then the interest in a layer two or the adjacent Sorry, before we pulse. go any further do you have yeah. any time frames about that or okay roughly? so that's where what do you set a reasonable expectation to hit that like that's where i do see the network is completely capable of hitting every one of those moon targets that people have the question is when mm. so the way i'm looking at this is this is getting back down to a little bit more of an economic and programming standpoint so ethereum if you look at its price over time on look into hex.com look into solana look into mm. bnb Hmm. All those networks seem to follow a regular growth pattern. And so just in that, it's pretty safe to assume that a good stable network that has cheap gas would do the same uh, for hmm. a layer one within the same yeah. relative time frame. Now, the things that I add to the potential for this network is the fact that when you look at Ethereum, it launched bare and empty, like feel the dreams, build it, they will come. And they came yeah. and they built and more came. So um, now BNB, I'm not sure if it launched with like a DEX or something in it at least already. Like, but for the most part, they launch relatively bare these networks, and mm. Pulse Chain is going to launch full, a full ecosystem mm. to value reinforce. So I mean, if I can talk about other projects, I mean, you've got Power City, which is a construction company pulling all the devs. You have Liquid Loans targeting the uh, high end uh, users for you know liquidity and uh, asset appreciation the real money understanding people of how loans work you've got people building wallets going after the new users you've got richard hart doing a free airdrop one-to-one -to, -one to scoop up all the ethereum users you've got cheap gas fees to compete with bnb then you've got uh wow uh then you've got uh two nft projects coming mintra which has already got its software in the t uh, beta test and it's got a buyback and burn function like Pulse X. Yeah. And then you've got NFT on Pulse coming. So like the utility that is already packed and ready to launch on this, 
Hmm. Like I almost imagine that, you know, you have to build your network and then frame it up like you're building a truck and then get it on the highway and get it moving. Well, we've been doing all that on top of Ethereum on the highway and we're about to jump off like a transformer, like Bumblebee, do a somersault <laughs> in the air, land on the ground and drive ahead. Hmm. This is the way I see that playing out. So, I mean, another beautiful thing is back to liquid loans. I haven't put enough time into this for the fact that the tokenomics didn't have a lot for me to sink into, but the value of a stable coin. A lot of people underappreciate the value of the soundback dollar back in the 1960s before yep. Nixon killed it for fiat. Hmm. I mean, the original idea was that if you had one dollar, you could take it to a bank somewhere and trade it for some gold. It was yep. a receipt for a portion of gold for something you knew was valuable that you could use for something. Yep. And by that guarantee, it had value. You could trust in it. But the moment they start being able to print it willy nilly it loses its value inflation mm. happens and then again you've got the contract with what binance that can produce usdc and their health when you actually look at it they're not pardon coinbase produces coinbase. usdc circle yeah. yeah coinbase sorry so their contract actually they're not even sound backed like their coin mm. can be produced in greater quantity than the actual fiat that they're holding yeah, which was not the intent of it. So, I mean, again, you have the same inflationary technique, mm -hmm. but now you have an actual agreed upon market value of pulse like you would have for gold. And then mm -hmm. it backs the value of the USDL, yes. which is in a finite supply, at least in relation to the contracts and to the to the pulse. So this I don't even know how to put into words the uh, uh, or into mathematical terms, the financial value of a trustable sound backed stable coin so all these economic principles like when you build something better than everyone else like bread was great you get baguette you get a french bun you get a croissant yeah. but then somebody came along and they sliced the bread everyone had to have it sliced after that yep. and richard hart has come and just sliced the blockchain that's the way so, i see this so do you think obviously with all those things that you're just stacking on top of each other right you're talking about do you think it's just going to be like overnight people just run into it's going to be like you know a gold rush into pulse chain or do you think it's going to take time a bit of a slow burn so uh, i think it's going to be absolutely chaos and hard to predict at first but mm -hmm. my intuition my thought is that if you'd asked me this earlier it would be a much different answer because you've had so many different emotions in the market you've had people get in get ready get fomo anticipation they've gone almost through the five stages of grieving waiting for the network to come out yeah and in that they've been producing hype they've been spreading the word so mm. lots of anticipation but even that anticipation is going through the five stages of grieving yeah. waiting for this network to come out so Basically, I, I think it'll be a little rush at first because there'll be a lot of disbelief going, well, this is a scam too. It can't possibly be live. It's not 2025. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a little lull and then people will start diving in from probably like that 10 X that I'm talking about. And the number of users has probably been sitting on the sidelines since pulse X. Like, uh, well, I mean, it's probably not grown that much, but you look at July it was what? 60,000. 70,000 ish it, it more than doubled roughly by the time we got to Paul sex in February. So are you talking about telegram group? Well, I'm talking about the number of sacrifices for Paul's chain versus mm. the number of sacrifices yes. for Paul sex yes. that indicates yes. the number of users with interest waiting to get into Paul's chain. In my opinion, a so, lot of people missed Paul's sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. So but so that number had grown from 60,000 to 140,000 waiting mm. to get into pulse by the Paul sex sacrifice. So, I mean, that number could have easily doubled again to like 300,000 people. So I'm not even deal. sure it's 60,000. I think it's around 40,000 sacrifices. Was it that small? Was it that I small? Think, I think it's around 40. Now it depends, obviously people in the comments let us know, but obviously some people pulled their money together, but I think it's around 40,000 wallet addresses okay. the sacrifice for Pulse Chain. Okay. Yeah, let's see, that's where I wasn't around for that. I was around for the Pulse X sacrifice. So I'm like, I was there. I remember mm. these facts. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, so, I mean, still just the point is the amount of users that grew from July, yeah, uh, August, September, you know, a little bit over half a year. That was a large growth in users. And we've still been waiting since February, uh, another three months. So, I mean, 
we're going to see a lot of users that have been sitting back waiting for market launch to see that this project is ready who didn't even bother to get into the sacrifice and even more users that are on standby that just missed the sacrifice and have been following the hype from the community so yeah, yeah. i do believe we're going to see a lot of action coming in that should balance the people that are trying to take value out at first but I mean, long term is more how I try to look at the assets. I try to imagine, you know, looking at it in a year or three year or 10 year terms. So, I mean, I do see Pulse having a large wave in coming to uh, coming to get in that have missed it. Uh, the excitement of a brand new project. Then I see a little bit of a slowdown, like a drop off again. And this is where I think Pulse X will kind of show up for its price and be like, well, look, even during a correction, we're going up because of the burn. Yeah. And so at that point, though, I think the network will start to get its value back again and we'll see even more use in hex. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we start looking into the past a year, into the two year time frame, I see the network balancing out and all the layer ones traditionally do better than any others with the buyback and burn in Pulse X. I think that'll make up for the buy pressure missing from being a layer one. So you'll see those assets appreciate relatively close to each other priced together. Mm -hmm. And then the real interest uh, in Hex, the fact that Hart's Law, the moment there's liquidity bonding Pulse X and Hex, mm -hmm. the value will be transitorily siphoned off into Hex, which means no longer will people ever be able to make the comment but it's a ponzi scheme someone else has to buy to make the price go up mm -hmm. not once yep. it's priced in pulse x so this is where i see so much value where i mean this isn't just a program this is literally and i'm so glad the fcc is in a coma i can't say this enough hush my little baby <laughs> like stay asleep <laughs> fcc because uh i mean this is better than the world bank yeah this is completely digitally insulated it's a whole new ecosystem of a brand new economy yeah yeah talking about an ecosystem i'm not sure if you've seen the video and i probably sound like a broken record to people that watch uh, this stream but my colleague jexa who works at liquid loans too head of it and security he did a video on his channel he's got a video called Hexsafe, and his video is called one defi w-o-n and basically this whole new ecosystem that's about to you know become uh, into um, fruition very soon is we basically we don't need anyone else right because we have the substrate pulse chain cheaper faster more environmentally friendly we have the dex pulsex we have the savings account hex we have the central bank the borrowing and lending protocol liquid loans on top of other protocols you don't need anything else right and if you're holding parts of all this every time someone uses liquid loans if you're a loan staker you're getting fees if you're a hex staker right you're earning interest the whole time or sorry inflation the whole time if you've got part, part of pulse x and every time the buy and burn function happens obviously it's deflationary your price is going to be uh, bought up and it's going to help you know the buy and burn is going to help with price every time someone uses the pulse chain network 25 percent of fees are burned so it's not just about having assets like buying dogecoin or or litecoin and hoping it's going to go up obviously these assets will have price appreciation as, as well as volatility but you're also making they're all yield bearing assets too so i i completely reiterate what you're saying it's so exciting that we've got this whole new ecosystem a whole new era that's literally upon us you know within a uh, four weeks, four more weeks, wink, wink. And it's just, it's just going to be crazy. So what, what's your play going to be when mainnet goes live? That's where I just, uh, I had to be careful. Sometimes I fantasize and, and I <laughs> stop being happy and stoic with my place in the world that I have found such a wonderful thing and have an opportunity. And I wish I was already rich so I could get right into, uh, all of the facets of Paul Sachs. Like, I've been debating back and forth on whether it's worth it for me to provide liquidity based on the fact that I'm such a small fry. It could actually be more harmful to me in my taxes mm. <laughs> than it could be beneficial. But I mean, right off the bat, what is exciting me is um, the party token, which isn't going to be there in Paul Sex. It's a place. Token, yeah. Yeah. The, so basically the single side is staking pools, plural. And that's why somebody asked me earlier in my videos, like, why is this pools if it's staking? Like, I can't find the staking. It's not called staking. Well, traditional staking, you get more of the asset. Hmm. And this, you don't get more of the same asset. You get more of something else. And that's where, well, what do I get? Well, the community has to agree and vote on which assets 
can be selected there, but then you're going to have your choice. Hmm. There could be one, there could be two, there could be five, there could be 10 different things to pick from. And you could put all of your Paul sex into one, or you could split it between two. Hmm. So you have a literally a kid in a candy shop option of brand new tokens coming to the system. And you get to claim them through Paul sex and do it safely and earn your yield and it creates stickiness for pulse x i think that is so beautiful and i can't wait to play with it because i can't wait to see the brand new weird crazy token hummocks that get com mm. come up with and get brought on there for me to play with it's just uh it's a gateway drug i mean i shouldn't be that mean to it but it gets me right into the crypto so uh i am really excited to get into the single side of staking uh, i mean providing the liquidity it, it mm. seems really fun and i've got some ideas maybe later down the road i'm not so irked in so my basic plan is a small fry that missed pulse honestly is uh is to thank my lucky stars i got in a bunch of other sacrifices i am gonna have my hex ready to bridge in the moment the bridge opens when uh the network goes live i'm gonna trade a little p hex for a little bit of pulse and i'm not gonna care what the ratio is because i just want to have it have it done with and have it said with i'm going to go to freepulse.io i'm going to collect some free pulse and then i'm going to be glad that i got some imd i'm going to be glad that i got liquid loans i'm going to be glad that i got mintra because i'm going to be able to stake all of these and i'm going to be able to get pulse so i'm going to be able to sit back have those staked and laugh have my pulse x staked and laugh have my little bag of pulse i bought with my some of my px staked and laugh when the bridge opens get my e hex in do a little more shopping with that value and then right. take my leftover e hex and my leftover p hex pair them up and throw them in the hex hex pair because i support that greatly and i might even just take the smallest little fragment of pulse x and hex and throw it into that pair just because i support that it's more of a statement than a financial gain. Nice man. Yeah, I think I think what you said is is uh, is good. Needs to be reiterated. If you don't know what you're doing, you need to be a bit careful with LP because obviously you can experience uh, impermanent loss. But those single sided staking pools are, you know, unless you're stupid and you give your seed phrase away, you'll be fine with those, right? If you find ones with good APYs or good APRs, then you're gonna, you know, they're pretty much. They're kind of like dummy proof. If you want to know how they work, obviously you can, well, actually I learned how to use those kind of pools on pancake swap. There's something called oh, syrup pools and it's the same kind of thing. So you take your cake token and you can stake it and then get, you know, X, Y token or whatever, you know, um, whatever token they're offering and offers if there's different APYs that change all the time. But Pulse X is going to be the same with better game theory. So the single sided staking pools are going to be uh, very tasty. Obviously we're going to have to wait for the community to vote on those and see which ones uh, they want to have. Liquidity providing, uh, well, of course, we're getting half of the pair for free as well. So that's another interesting play. And like you said, you're going to be using liquid loans and Mintra and other places to stake and collect your yield. So, you know, sounds like a full time job, to be honest, doesn't it? When you when you uh, when you get into it. Yeah, you would think so. That's where a lot of people they look at me and they're like, "How are you doing this?" Because I work <laughs> a full time job as well, and Again, program of VCR when I was two years old, like I, I figure out how to interface with this stuff in no time. Uh, mm. I mean, really to make my PulseX mass sheet that everyone sees, it took six hours of energy drinks and arguing with Excel. <laughs> and then it was done. Um, so yeah, like really for me, what I described to you is gonna take me 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna put my stuff away and go to work and spend eight hours putting mud on a wall and sanding. <laughs> so yeah but i mean it has taken me half a year to get the level of knowledge to have the confidence to know what i'm doing with what assets so that i can mm. quickly in 20 minutes go clickety click 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 yeah yeah no you have to de definitely go down the rabbit hole with crypto it's not something that you can just watch one video and get it right and in fact when you get into crypto it's like learning a new language with all this liquidity liquidity pools and dexes and sexes and all this stuff so Definitely, you need to become au fait with all these terms. And then, you know, I think you've, uh, you're a fast learner, obviously. So, you, so you've done really well. Is yeah. there anything that you're more excited about on Pulse Chain than another thing? Or just the whole, the whole mainnet going live is, is what's uh, tickling you? Oh, my. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that excite me. So, I mean, 
that's where and it's not just the math and it's not just the numbers like you brought up the liquidity that you have to understand lately a point i've been dry, trying to drive home in some of my videos is market correlation so the traditional markets as much as we're freedom movement of crypto and free expression we're not connected to that we're decentralized well if enough of the same money like hey i'm warren buffett and i buy equal amounts of the stock market and crypto when i move my money it'll have equal effects in both hmm. so correlation has uh become very very noticeable between the nasdaq xpx 500 and bitcoin and ethereum and with that even with the low volume trading in hex so nobody's actually pushing the price in there it's just dragging by Hart's law with a little bit that's paired in ethereum hmm. That is being really painful. So the most exciting thing for me about Pulse Chain is the fact that it's going to correlate Hex away from Ethereum and to a new project that's mm -hmm. near its price floor that should be able to do well in a bear market. So I've been watching the Hex charts, like I said, since November 10th. I bought after the all-time high, and I've only seen more pain. I've been dollar cost averaging in waiting for that so that validation of i told you so for the last six months i've been buying a falling asset is yeah. going to be my most exciting part of paul's chain uh Thank but you. next to that really it's just going to be seeing who comes and uses it and what kind of what kind of viral exposure it gets like for me the excitement will be when i hear bloomberg talking about pulse chain mm -hmm. when i hear tom hanks mention he owns some pulse chain like yeah. for me seeing that wave as we break the floodgates oh that's gonna be the roller coaster that's gonna have me on yeah. the edge of my seat yeah 100 percent. you know and like you said that validation of knowing that you were there before anyone was really talking about it right before any of the mainstream or before anyone with a platform was really talking about it. So I, I definitely feel you on that. Obviously, you're super bullish on Pulse, and I'm sure you're aware that there's a lot of EVM compatible chains, a lot of forks of Ethereum, a lot have been touted as Ethereum killers, and uh, most of them haven't killed Ethereum at all. Do you think Pulse Chain is that one that will be the, uh, the Ethereum killer? Sorry, dude, your mic isn't working. Hello? Yeah, there you go. Ah, okay. I said, no. <laughs> no, I don't think Pulse Chain is going to be the Ethereum killer. I am still really bullish on it, but uh, has anything killed Bitcoin? Governments, yeah. opinions, new networks? No. Slowed it down, taken from its value, taken from its hype, sure. Maybe yeah. even reinforced its value through growth and awareness, but no, nothing killed it. That's where I see Ethereum and Pulse Chain working in tandem, hmm. uh, the same way that Hex and PHEX work in tandem. So they're going to be classic users in Ethereum that don't want to move over. And they're quite happy and content whales in there. And some new whales are going to want to compete. But your average Joe is going to have a much better time getting into Pulse Chain and competing. So you're going to have a little bit of a different client base. But again, you're going to have interactivity between assets, between concepts. And with that, no no i see them complementing each other over time like i do see us siphoning a whole bunch of value with the free airdrop like trying to scoop up somewhere between 25 to 35 percent of their users mm. just right off the bat because f cheaper gas fees the exact same assets yeah but uh but in that then you know as other users come like i really just see it more like a neck and neck competition i don't see anything just taking out ethereum because it would have to be a completely brand new technology like holodeck chips in your hand you know <laughs> web 4.0 boom then okay we can start talking about the death of uh the death of uh ethereum like the way that paypal is slowly dying yeah Gotcha, gotcha. So what do you think in terms of like how close we are to the mainnet? Obviously, you do a lot of research on, on, on the mathematics side, but I'm sure you you go out about on Twitter and Telegram and find out the sentiment. Do you think we're really four weeks away or what what is your take on it? Um so I uh like I said, I, I was a coder back in the day. It's not my primary thing, but yes, I have uh managed to get my way into some chats where I can see the, the sentiment and even some of the doubts. And I see it as a privilege to be in that chat, so I don't want to go gossiping about everything that I hear in there, but it's where I changed my tone recently in the last few days of can you smell it? 
can can you smell the opportunity pulse chains around the corner <laughs> basically 420 yesterday marked uh what i believe might be the final release of sacrifice totals mm. everything looks completely accurate they're missing a script for ada for the ada network mm. to they just need that script to be able to literally falsify any claims of, oh, you missed my sacrifice. I made it on this date. Can't you see? Um, so just in the fact that they're 99.9% .9 sure on the stack totals and that script is basically their reinforcement to be 100% sure all the math is right. So what are the hangups stopping launch? pretty much just waiting to see if there's any complaints about the sacrifice totals mm -hmm. investigate them properly and thoroughly because they actually care about what the consumers or the market or whatever the community however you want to address the people involved yeah. they care about them so yeah. they take the time to actually listen to every one of these complaints even if it's i clipped my toenails and suddenly my seed phrase stopped working <laughs> they still take the time to look into it i mean i don't know how deep they look into that one but that's uh that's the hang up is the fact that they care hmm. and so the network's ready to launch today if they wanted they could take hmm. a snapshot and launch it today so in that um i think that anything later than may 15th is is starting to get you know fud I really believe that there's every reason it could launch in the first week of May or sooner. So I'm really, really bullish and excited for it because uh, I've played with testnet. There's no reason for a version three. Everything's working. Everything is running pretty much flawlessly. Yeah. All the functionality is there. There's nothing left to do mm -hmm. really. And yeah, like literally the finishing touches and bows are all on it. It's, it's just being able to make sure that if they had that script from ADA, they could launch tomorrow, but they're still just trying to generate it. I don't understand the mechanics entirely. Somehow they can see one address, but there's actually 11 addresses associated in tracking things there, and they can't see or generate the other 10 addresses just to be you know, extra sure that uh, that they've got all the sacrifice totals. So do they even need that to launch? No, they could launch and just say, sorry about your luck. You didn't show up in all of our other hard nine months of research on SAC totals. Hmm. You're out of luck. We've satisfied at least 99.99% .99 of our customers, but they're going for 100%. And that's what we're waiting for. Well, man, people are going to love you. You come on here, you give <laughs> Moonboy math and you give the hopium with them around the corner, especially with your background, you know, like you said, you, you can... You can read code and you know how th how things are going down and things are looking quite um you know slick and we're, and we're close by you said before about a four cent pulse chain but you didn't give a time frame do you have a time and obviously it's all speculation but so generally when people are pumping me what i'm what i'm thinking of is that it is completely reasonable within a 365 day time frame my generally okay. first price estimate when people are asking me is like all right in a year this is where mm. I think it could easily be. And in a year we could of runtime. So not mm. by December, but in a year of runtime, whenever launches within 365 days, I don't see any reason we couldn't be at four cents. Wow. Wow. Listen, man, this has been uh, really good having you on. Uh, you've got some great content before you go. I'm going to start asking question, a quick fire question round to all my guests. So I've got eight questions for you. You have to give me either one word answers or one sentence, no longer. Quick fire, put you on the spot, and then yeah, you're allowed to go. But I'm a way. rambling man. Well, between one <laughs> word and one sentence. So All right. number one. Challenge best, accepted. Best piece of advice you were ever given. Wash my hands. Favorite food. Pizza. First ever crypto you bought. Hex. Nice. Biggest teenage crush? <sighs> celebrity or non-celebrity? Uh, all right. So a uh, girl in my class. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chantel. You know, would he ever matter? <laughs> <laughs> Number one piece of advice for no coiners? Number Sorry. One, no. 
number one bit of advice for no coiners? No coiners. Uh, Someone not who familiar holds with no them. no crypto. Oh, um, get some. <laughs> one thing you haven't done yet, but you must do before you die. Skydive. Nice. Worst investment you ever made. A 1989 Ford Tempo. (laughs) And last one, advice to your younger self. The Bitcoin's not a scam. Give him the 50 bucks. (laughs) Listen, man, it was great to have you on. Where can people find out more about you? Tell us your your social media platforms. So name Top Gun Hex 80, and you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Telegram. You can find me on YouTube. It's where I care to be, and I even have a Gmail account at that uh, at that name. So I am at this point still talking to my fans directly. I, I it's not like I have a whole lot of money here or an agent or any separation. <laughs> so I'm willing to engage with the community so I can learn more. Sweet man, you're an asset to the community. I appreciate you coming on, and you'll have to come back on. You know, when Pulse Chain goes live, and uh, we'll see how these predictions and our and our speculation has fared. Thanks a lot for your time, man. Oh, thanks for having me here. Really appreciate it. Take it easy, buddy. Listen, guys, definitely go and subscribe to Top Gun's channel. Like I said, great content, great moon math, great hopium. And the guy is not pulling figures out of uh, thin air. He's got some math behind it. So definitely go and check it out. If you like videos like this, guys, do hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you're notified every time we drop new videos and content on the channel. You can also tap the like button, share the video with someone who you think it may benefit. And if you're watching the playback, drop a cheeky comment below for the algo. It does help us out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.